Well, we're out here again for our first trip of the summer, and it is just beautiful sunny day, but we have a lot of wind. Um, we're at the Moose Lake Entry Point. Our initial plan today was to uh, paddle up Moose and uh, go through the Prairie Portage and then down Basswood uh, for the first day, but uh, they're saying it could gust up to 30 miles an hour, and we're a little uh, hesitant to head out into the open water with that. So our backup plan is to head right across the moose here and hop on a 160 rod portage that's going to dump us into Wind Lake. Uh, paddle across there and then dump into Wind Bay on Basswood. It should keep us a little bit more protected and uh, hopefully it'll be a nice uh, alternative to what we initially had planned. But uh, we're really excited to be out here again and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy the sights and sounds that we can bring you on this trip. We just finished that paddle across from the uh, Moose Lake entry point and we're at this uh, portage that's going to drop us into Wind Lake. It's about 175 rods and uh, from what we hear it's pretty hilly so we're going to give that a go. Uh, we were bucking the wind pretty hard on the way across. We had some water lapping over the edges a little bit on some of the splashes but um, we're inter interested to see what it's going to look like when we get into Wind Lake. It seems like the wind's going to be just howling right down the, the middle of the lake there so we're going to try to hug the shoreline and uh, see where that gets us. We're looking at doing some fishing later on today and uh, hopefully this nice sunny weather will hold out for us and we can find a nice campsite to relax in for the rest of the evening. We'll see you on down the trail. Nothing like the uh, first portage of the year to get your heart pumping and uh, make you really appreciate the <laughs> good conditioning you had last summer. Um, I think I'm probably about 150 rods through this 175 rod portage. And uh, yeah, it's nice. Just finished up with work yesterday. So I've got the summer to play now. So it's uh, nice to be out and enjoying the wilderness. Well, as you can see on a day like today, Wind Lake is appropriately named. Uh, we've got a strong wind just shooting right down the middle of the lake. Uh, if you can see on the shore, straight at the other end, that's where we're headed for our next portage. Uh, we just hopped off this 175 rod portage that was a little bit hilly, um, but it was nice walking through the trees and uh, getting out of the wind for a little while. We're gonna throw our packs back in the canoes and uh, try to hug the shoreline over here and see if we can stay out of the wind as much as possible. But uh, we're gonna work our way on down the lake and uh, maybe throw a fishing line in and see if we can catch something along the way. We just finished paddling across Wind Lake and uh, we were right into a steady headwind the entire time. It uh, made for some tough paddling, uh, strain the back a little bit, not in a bad way, just, you know, making sure you're alive. But uh, we're on this portage here, it's about 130 rods, it's going to dump us into uh, Wind Bay on Basswood Lake. Um, we heard rumored that there is a river crossing halfway along here, and uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, we're going to load up our gear here and head on down the trail.
Looks like we've had a bear uh, walking down this trail with us. Uh, <laughs> it's always nice to know that you've got company out here in the woods. here so that uh, if we do have any waves splashing overboard it uh, won't get the camera wet but um, we're gonna buckle down here and paddle hard and see if we can get up ahead to the next portage that'll get us into uh, Hoist Bay on Basswood again. Hi, 
I'm going to try to attempt to start a fire with flint and steel the way they used to years ago. Uh, what you need is uh, steel. This I made out of an old file. You need real hard steel for it. A piece of flint and char cloth. This is nothing but a piece of cotton that's been burned without oxygen. If you put it in a can and throw it in the fire, uh, it'll burn without uh, catching on fire, turning into a flame. So you catch the spark from the flint and steel on the char cloth, and then you have a little bird's nest you make with some real dry tinder. I got some birch bark because there's all kinds of it around here. Don't go tearing it off the live trees. There's a lot of it on the ground. And anything else real dry, if it's try and get it from up off the ground four or five feet, you should find enough dry stuff. I'll give it a try. There, I caught a spark on the char cloth. Put it in your little bird's nest and blow on it. Uh, preferably keep it above your head so you're not breathing all the smoke. Apparently not very dry tinder. <laughs> and that's how you do it. Make sure your fire is ready to go and you slide it in. We just finished up eating tonight and uh, getting ready to t think about heading into the tent and relaxing. Um, being our first trip out, I can tell you I'm really uh, out of shape after uh, teaching all winter long and not getting much exercise. So uh, this paddling into the wind thing has been pretty tough on me. I'm going to sleep like a baby tonight, I think. Um, speaking of babies, uh, one of the people on our trip is an expecting father. and. Uh, his wife is back at home and she's due probably in the next three weeks, but uh, you're never quite sure when that's going to happen. So we uh, picked up one of these things right here uh, from Voyage and Earth Outfitters. It's a satellite phone and uh, it's a pretty slick deal. It's nice and small. It comes with a waterproof case so you can throw it in your pack and uh, have it with you wherever you go. Um, to use it, it works just like a cell phone. You flip it open, uh, turn it on, and wait for it to acquire a satellite. Once it does, you just make a phone call like a cell phone and it works just perfect. Um, the nice thing about these ones that Voyager North has, uh, you can get messages from people that are back on the outside. Um, if they send you a message, or if they uh, call you and leave a message on the phone, uh, you can turn it on and view the LCD panel. It'll tell you if you have a message or not. And that happens without charging you uh, anything at all. If you do make a phone call, it does cost about $3 a minute. So uh, you want to use those sparingly. But it's a nice thing to have, especially uh, like for our trip here, if uh, we get the, the message that uh, we need to head out quickly, we can do so. But uh, something to think about if you're back here and you have a situation like that that you might need to attend to getting messages from the outside world, you can uh, pick up one of these bad boys. Also, I know you can pick up the spot locator beacons. Those just kick out a signal all the time on your trip, and uh, friends and family back at home can track your, your trip and see where you're at at all times. It also has some buttons on there. If you need help, you can hit the button for help. If you need help immediately, you can hit that button as well. So. Some newer technology that you can use on the, the boundary waters. Um, sometimes it's a little bit cheating, but it's also nice to have that security to know that uh, if we need to get out of here, we can. Well, thanks for joining us today on uh, this episode of the BWCA cast. Uh, we just uh, finished up our first day into our first summer trip of the year. We're having a great time. We're sitting here on Hoist Bay on Basswood Lake, uh, relaxing around the campfire and uh, just visiting and telling stories. It's uh, just a nice time to be out here. 
Uh, couldn't ask for uh, clearer weather. It's just beautiful out. Thanks for joining us on this episode. Uh, if you'd like to email us, please do so at bwcacastfans at gmail.com. You can check out some photos from today's trip. Uh, Jesse Glass has been taking photos, and we're going to put those up on the gallery. If you have anything you'd like to see on the show, please email us and swing by the forums on the website and just leave your comments. We'd love to hear from you. It's always nice to hear what uh, people that watch the show think of what we're doing. And uh, until next time, this is Bill Bryson with BWCACast.com. <laughs>